Hey guys, Crew Blind Wave. I'm Eric. I'm Calvin. Aaron. And we're back with the season finale of Andor. Uh, exactly, Calvin. I don't I want it to end. That's the exact sound. No, but there's another season coming. But in I want to see it. There's another season coming. In Calvin. two years. Well, yeah, but we get more stories in between then. There's like a Bad Batch is gonna be here. I think they're working on that acolyte thing. Ahsoka. But I want more of this. Ahsoka's gonna be a thing. You don't want Ahsoka. I want more of this also, I said. And it will be here, but Aaron, we have to I take just a want to breather. consume. <laughs> Surprise? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> last time on Andor. Well, last time uh, we uh, we had the death of uh, Mama Ma- Ma- Marva. We had a. Mama uh, Ma- Marva? Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if you were stuttering. I was. Or, for BT Emo. Oh, he was truly Emo. B2. But I wasn't sure if it was a stutter, like Mama Ma- Ma- or if you were saying Mama no. Marva. Mama Ma- Marva. They <laughs> got Cass- Cassian. Where um, have you been? We probably also will be, I assume, getting the Anto Krieger stuff this yeah. episode. Or, probably. Yeah, his the, sacrifice uh, for the greater good. Yeah. And yeah. The, the funeral through Rick's Road. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested if anything happens with uh, Cyril and Daedra this Cyril time. Because Cyril's kind of just been like, like, <laughs> like, ah! you know? Yeah, but, but he's also been kind of like, Cyril yeah. Oh, yeah. Figgis. Hey, how, how, you, how you doing? No, I'm just... He definitely has been doing I just that. Wait, I just wait out here. Um, but he <laughs> talked to our boy. <laughs> or he talked to our boy Linus Mosk back on Ferrix. He's like, Colossa! <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So they know that uh, Cassian's uh, mother has died. Yeah. And he's probably going to be coming back. So everybody's going to Ferrix. Dank! But, dank Ferrix. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a poll last time. Will you call it wishful thinking? Yeah, sure, but let's see what the results were. Is Marva really dead? Dong. 15% said, no. it's a fake out, sure. Or no, she's not dead. But everybody else, everyone, 85% of people said, no dummies, she's dead. Is that, was that the pop- option in the poll? No dummies. No dummies. Yeah. Perfect. I know sometimes like there was ones like no, they're good, and then the other one's like murders grandma. I was like oh shit. <laughs> Alexa Chipman says, while I hope it isn't a fake out for the weight of the story, the fact that we didn't see her is telling. Mm. I don't think she's actually dead. Mm. Like I don't. She could be dead, but I just feel like there's something else happening, especially when that you know, uh, Bravo. What was his name? Bras. Yeah, Brasso. Brasso was like, we got something else for you to do, or I don't know. Uh, Gage Akins says, I hope she's actually dead. Uh, is I, be- hope, I wow. hope. I hope. I hope she's dead. Fuck you, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not what he means. It, <laughs> it speaks to the realism of the show uh, that it's been constantly displaying. In real life, people often don't get to have any memorable last words or say goodbye to their loved ones. But it people, is very grounded. But people in real life have faked their death. They have. So that's not fake. Less often yep. than people actually die, though. Well, yeah, so, of course. I mean, that's, that's you know, still... That happens, but... <laughs> that <laughs> happens to everyone, you mean? Yeah, everyone dies. <laughs> so everyone's, re- everyone's really going to die. So, like, the percentage of fake deaths to real deaths is obviously going to be lower. But not everybody so saying... gets an Imperial Cantwell-class cruiser to up their tractor beam from two to five, throw shit back at them, and then turn your ship into a lightsaber. So things happen. What the fuck's he talking about? He's talking about... The guy. What's this got to do with death? Um, Has to do beginning with of the episode reality, which is Star Wars, which Calvin, is not reality. Hey, me bringing up Star Wars in this moment is appropriate. I don't think there was any to every other time ex- explanatory sentences and anything that was. He just turned said. his ship into a lightsaber and no, spun. Calvin, and no, he did. We High left fighters. Aaron behind. Don't look at him. What? Leave him back there. <laughs> <laughs> Pillar of salt back that way. <laughs> uh, Randall Mills is going to end this with, she's had the rarest death in Star Wars, old age. Doesn't happen much. All right, well, thank People you. We don't usually make it there, so you're just saying, that's how it's what it is. Thank you to the general. Sometimes you die, sometimes you're old. Right, is that who it was, general? Yep. Mills. Here Dude. comes the general. Ladies and gentlemen. That's uh, the the one kid from from the pack. Yeah. Salvage yard. Yeah. Look at this place. Where's this? This, this is this is the this, this is, is the, yeah, yeah the first plant we were on right. Yeah. That cargo That's... shuttle. What? That cargo shuttle is really cool again. 
<laughs> it looks like the rogue one, Aaron. <laughs> the Gaga Shadow! You've uh, Death 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 <laughs> You've watched too much Star Wars with me. You need to get used to this. Why does she have Death Troopers? Ah, uh, because this She's is a important. high ranking ISB agent on an operation. They only are usually involved in Super special operations. Secret, like, this is a special operation. Mm. Is it? We've only seen them they're, in like they're rounding up all of the the people here on Ferrix in the funeral. Sure, I mean we didn't even see them for what Thrawn attacking the whole rebellion fleet. You know? Does he know about Marvel? Yeah, he does now. It was a very short conversation. He asked about the funeral. Let's walk. I can't go lower than four. Oh, else? Who's that guy? Why does he look suspicious? He's probably an agent. Uh, yeah, there's one ISB agent just hanging around. Yeah, but I don't think it was him. He was the guy that well, It wasn't shot. him before, but it could be now. Mm. It's Night Shift. Yeah, that guy. So. Is she following him? Yeah. Who watches the Watchers? Is he assembling a bomb? I think I don't, so. I don't know. Maybe. There's not many other reasons why you would be so careful. I think the revolution's about ready to pop. Maybe he's be... assembling like a model ship. People can be careful without making a bomb. Why worry it though? It's not like he knows about it. I guarantee you, he's got no idea what's going on. Bank on that. I won't be so sure. Why are you talking? You know something I don't. Do me a favor. Keep it that way. <clears throat> Is he working with the other dude? I think so, yeah. Oh, that that's looks a, a lot more bomby than it did last time. Considering what they did to his dad. I'd say they, yeah, they killed his dad, right? I mean, I know they tortured. Did they kill him? I'm trying to remember. They hung him on Farrak or on Rick's road. On Rick's yeah. road. I thought they did. Cloris, we'd like privacy, please. Man. You're gambling again. Nonsense. And here, in Coruscant. That's ridiculous. Do you have any idea how tired of this I am? It's a lie. It's total fantasy. Who's telling you this? <laughs> but not here. You promised. I've kept my promise. Keep your voice down. Well, he can't hear me. <laughs> Literally listen. You tell me who's saying this and I'll tell you why. Oh, please. Where would I get the money? That's the question that scares me the most. Mm. Is she feeding false information to the driver? Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. She's Save been wary her for daughter, him. but get rid of the husband by making him an accomplice yeah. of some, some sort. He's denying it. She doesn't have a source, but the driver doesn't know. Yeah. And she's been thinking that he's Empire since the first episode. Eyes open. Possibilities That's everywhere. The rest. Just need to get this cleaned up before Marvel finds us doing this in the house. Hi, right, Clem. He's the coolest blaster in the galaxy. <laughs> Almost as cool as that cargo ship. That was a cool cargo ship. <laughs> I could go on for an hour about how cool that cargo ship is. Why? Where have we seen it? <laughs> Tune into Badonka Gong, everybody. <laughs> Chas? Hegler? Down now! It's the guy that let him borrow the ship, right? Hey. I'm just... I'm so sorry. I loved your mom. I really did. I know. Everybody knew his mom. Mm -hmm. Well, she was a daughter of... Ferex, yeah. Where is she? Cass. Where is she? Mm. There will be times when the struggle seems impossible. Mm. Oh, I know this already. <laughs> Alone, unsure, dwarfed by the scale of the enemy. Remember this. Whoa. Shit. Remember that the frontier of the rebellion is everywhere. And even the smallest act of insurrection pushes our lines forward. 
And know this, the day will come when all these skirmishes and battles, these moments of defiance will have flooded the banks of the Empire's authority, and then there will be one too many. <laughs> one single thing will break the siege. Remember this. Try. That's right. We ain't Jedi here. Yeah. It's not do or do not. We it's have to try. try. <laughs> oh, that's good. We gave them a max of 30 people. 30 Daughters people. pushed back, so we've upped it to 40. Daughters? The Daughters of Ferex. It's a social club. We'll control positions here, here, and here. We'll have snipers in a containment unit there. Containment, yes. Snipers, no. I want him taken alive. I want that message passed along the line. Clearly. They need that connection to Axis. Mm-hmm. Social club. Eric, hmm. what else could it possibly be? I don't know. Where would I get the money? That's what scares me the most. That's right. Oh, there was the information. Could be helpful in many ways. Well, it sounded like Perrin had done this before. <clears throat> They've made some odd banking deals recently. This would certainly explain it. Krieger, you're missing it. Anto Krieger. That makes more sense. They're like, neither of those guys are Krieger. Mm, no, they're going to. This wasn't a dialogue, Ditra. We get nothing from a dead body. Someone needs to be in the room saying that. You're missing the point. Today was about wiping the taste of Aldani from the Emperor's mouth. You want to start a conversation? Find access. Hmm. You don't find how much bigger the rebellion is if you don't talk to the people and torture them, huh? Mm hmm. That's what she's thinking. And they're it's just like, like, oh, we did it. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, we caught one drug dealer. Now oh. the drug dealing is over. I was like, no, there's a system. Man, that ship is so fucking cool. It's so fucking cool. It's so cool. Almost cool as that cargo ship. This bike is cool. <laughs> hey, it's way cooler than that cargo ship. Yeah, no, you're trying to mock me, but you're so fucking wrong about it. I, I, don't, know, I don't know why, but just the way, <laughs> the way you popped off about that cargo ship, yeah. I was like, why are you so excited I'll about pop it? I'll pop up about everything. How dare you impeach my enlightenment? Yeah, it was Enlight a cargo <laughs> enlightenment. It was That's a, where you take this. It was a cargo shuttle, <laughs> asshole. It wasn't like we'd never even seen it before. It's been in things before. I wanted her to live with me. I came together. She told me. I couldn't get back. We shouldn't be in our cars. It's a trap. Tell him none of this is his fault. It was already burning. He's just the first spark of the fire. Tell him he knows everything he needs to know and feels everything he needs to feel. And when the day comes that those two pull together, he will be an unstoppable force for good. <laughs> Stop it. I'll take care of Marva. You take care of yourself. It's too late for that. <laughs> Dude, is he gonna get Bix out? Like, on his own? Luthen's coming, what's Luthen gonna do? Uh... <laughs> yes, he's still... <laughs> yeah, you don't look local. There's an ISP supervisor in town. A woman? You know her. Not yet. You've heard of her. How is this possibly good? They'll do the hunting for us. They'll want him alive, they'll find him, and we'll kill him. We just need him dead before they start asking questions. How long do we have before the festivities start? A few hours. You'll hear the anvil. The anvil! Yes. There he is. The harbinger of doom. He's just back here. Oh. You think you're just gone? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Dude, I love the look of that anvil. It's just pure Beskar. <laughs> like the, I don't know, the waves of the metal. Yeah. Is that early? How dare you? That man's always on time. No. Is it a signal because it's early? I 
guess we had the one in episode one as well. The Gungans and the drums. It's like a drum line. They had. I don't, I don't remember the too. horns. Yeah. You don't remember that? Yeah, I do. Ow. Uh, you don't remember that specific sound? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those are like when the uh, when the king has people coming to like, like I remember those kind of things. No, not like that's these the, are like instruments. Ewoks. But I, I, they were horns marching in a band. <laughs> Square this away! Get these people off! That's the guy that wanted to be prefect, right? Yeah. Can I be prefect? I think they're cool capes. Oh, we have two bands. Merging. We're gonna have one mega mega band, Eric. Yep. Oh my gosh. Walked right by Luthen. That's her brick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aw. The answer no. Whoa. I'm honored to be a daughter of Therix, and honored to be worthy of the stone. A stranger. I feel as if I can see you. And now I'm dead. And I yearn to lift you. Not because I want to shine or even be remembered. It's because I want you to go on. I'm glad Luthen's hearing this. <laughs> right. But we were sleeping. I've been sleeping. And I've been turning away from a truth I wanted not to face. There is a wound that won't heal at the center of the galaxy. See all these people. <laughs> the Empire is a disease that thrives in darkness. Oh man, he's she's speaking his language. If I could do it again, I'd wake up early and be fighting these bastards <laughs> from the start. <laughs> Ugh, fuck. Yes, Brasso! Brasso! Hit him with a brick. Hit him with her brick. Yes! yes. Oh, fuck. Ah. <laughs> she roll up. Start kicking it. There are so yeah. many more of us than there are. Breaking fire. Down. There's not enough people here to be garrisoned. Oh, fuck, man. Oh. 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 Oh man. Where's Daddy of Ferrix? He can come out and stop the chill wall. Oh, this guy's running! You pushing, guys? Meltdown, make him stop now! You send that man to his death! Dude, I hope he hits him with his hammers, you know? Oh. That guy knows how to wield hammers, right? Yeah. Like the armor. Like the, I was gonna <sighs> say, like the armor from Mandalorian. Got a bomb. Oh, danger getting pushed into. Alright, it beeps and flashes. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh hell shit. of a throw, kid! There's the foot. Oh, oh shit! Oh, 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 oh fuck! Oh my gosh! Now they're just firing in the crowd. Oh, he picked up an arm! 
something. I just made a droid on her or something. Headbutter, he headbutted a guy with the helmet! This is exactly what Luthen has been talking about. Good shot, yeah. No. Damn, man. Stormtroopers are good shots. It's canon. You. What are you doing here? Lead him out of the street. <laughs> with a blade! Said stormtroopers killed her whole family. Yeah. Get him out of there. Sweet boy. He's low on power, huh? Yeah. Oh no. Got him! Ooh, wow. Got him! There's still one more, right? Oh, well. Uh, that guy didn't make it. Alright. I was hoping maybe it was a plant, but I don't know. Jeez! Oh, that e -web. Is that an e-web? Yeah, it's a different it's tripod. So it hard. Oh, a rock to the face! Fuck. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this is Ferrix! Uh -oh. oh my gosh! Uh -oh. To the mud, <laughs> It's me. Oh, it's Karn. It's me. Dang it! How? You were in trouble. I felt it from across the stars. It's <laughs> <laughs> the name of the love theme in episode two. <laughs> I, should, I should say thank you. <laughs> you don't have to. And you'll never have to. Damn, man, okay. Man, I, man, I thought she Batman. was gonna be in trouble. I yeah. thought she was too. Oh, no, he certainly helped her out there. Give me those. Now go. You go now, or I'll forget it. Oh, no. I love these little, like, Rancor dogs. The Gorillion <laughs> hounds. Yeah. Cassian. <laughs> Cassian, yay! <laughs> oh, go pet him. You're no, no, not coming. Not today, baby. I no, no, never got to see you. Take care of Bix until I get there. I'm counting on you. You always say that. <laughs> He'll find us. And Bix just wants to be with the people he loves. Cassian will find us. Wing engines, but yeah. that's weird. That's a cool ship. Honestly, it looks like it's just put together by a bunch of random pieces of ships. <laughs> yeah, looks like a super beeped up, like uh, Naboo <laughs> Starfighter. Oh, Ooh. is Andor gonna be did, back at his yeah, ship? Did Cassian go to like, did he yeah. park in the same spot? So he's gonna meet him where he parked? Maybe. Cause we went across this field before, didn't we? we did. Like back first couple episodes. Kill me. Or take me in. Oh. This is cool. <laughs> That's why he lets him live. Cause that gun. I like this. It's a good gun. <laughs> oh man, that's where it ends, isn't it? It's a good place. Man. That's the things they were making. Yep, here we go, Eric. What's it for? Here we go. Oh, fuck. Fucking told ya. Fucking told ya! Holy fuck, look at this. It's <laughs> nearly finished. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the Andor thing. It's like the Andor yep. thing. That's amazing. Ah. Oh. Man, we talked about what those things could have been that they were we making. 
trying to figure it out, and we said we said Death Star stuff. We weren't sure exactly what. And right? it's specifically for the super laser, which will kill Cassian. He was working on the shit that kills him. Yep. Uh, tragic, but I'm glad they answered that question in the after credit scene. By the way, this sure because like it could have like it could have been like well it doesn't really matter. Yeah. The Empire was just they were making some shit. Yeah. Sometimes it's just slave labor just to keep them busy mm-hmm. so they're not, you know, doing other stuff, right? Sure. The whole point yeah. of them having them imprisoned and keeping them there was that they were afraid they'd rebel, so they just want to keep them there longer, right? But when you think about it, too, like, they created that kind of, like, competitive level of the prison mm-hmm. where, like, it's like, you know, you need to be at the top. They're making things for the Death Star laser there, and then they will send you to another prison. I wonder if the other prison's not making, like, important shit that we need, like, top quality fast now. The other prison... Like, there's, there were, like, you know, 15 other prisons in that lake or whatever, right? Well, yeah, like we but came. they were also, like... Because uh, we were talking about, like, well, a guy that is in one prison that's sent to another is going to be like, what the fuck? I was just in prison. Like, he's going to say something. Mm-hmm. But because they messed up and they sent him to another level in the same prison, like, I think that maybe they send you to another prison where people, they, they know you ain't getting out, but you're not making the top quality shit now, you know? I think the top quality shit is made by people that are tricked into thinking this is the most important thing you can do. That's why they it's first has something so important. You know, the most important thing you could do. Yeah. So you're thinking that it's it's like a, a means of controlling the quality and speed of production. Yeah. Well, I, I know, know that they have their stuff set up where they have the competition within like the prison within Ki- what was it Kino ships. right like mm-hmm. he was like ah yeah. oh, the lowest pers- lowest group is mm-hmm. gonna get shocked or whatever it was right yeah. But they also had like the worst level or worst whatever. So yeah. you had you couldn't just like everyone just only did one and you yeah. tied. Mm-hmm. You had to also do it better or else your yeah. whole group would be punished because yeah. the other groups were doing better. It was about quality and speed. So like <sighs> and it's for a very important piece. <laughs> you know, they're not making toilet yeah. rats. See, the thing though is like I'd be worried like what if they fucked up something? Right? Because if you mess you mess up a piece of that, like, I mean, I'm sure what if they, it doesn't operate. I'm you know? sure Galen Urso is you know has guys on you do like checking shit off, making sure, sure that you know there's got to be quality control. There's got to be someone on the back end checking quality control. Yeah. But they're making it with extremely cheap slash free slave labor. Just how it zooms out is awesome, yeah. and it you just, it, it starts so close, and you get yeah. such a scale like. And I it's can't. so great to see the red superstructure too. Yeah, I love seeing the red scaffolding. The and red shit. and the gold just reminds you of going in there during. Return of the Jedi. But yeah, so we always talk about like, cool. man, why do they always do that every time for the Andor thing? But that's that's what this is, right? Yeah. Like, yep. is that if we go back and look at that, is that gonna be? Uh, mm-hmm. Where was it in this episode? Was it back here? Pretty close. There it is. I mean, you could say one is a response to the other in a way too. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just get the same kind of feel of like how the Death Star has like that line coming down. And sure. Stuff, oh, yeah. But, I mean, I think it's I definitely know. reminiscent of it. Yeah. I mean, it's not exactly, but it's hard to be exact with like a. A logo. Mm-hmm. Sure. Because, like, that's kind of rebellion-ish. Yeah. It's just you know? not there yet. Yeah. Like, it's like that. But Sabine's is like that, but also it's a, different. It's a spark, but it's not the flame. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. I love, I love Marva's speech. Marva's speech is was up so there with good. Luthen's speech. It was really good. Two episodes ago for me, honestly. Yeah, his little monologue he had. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think that my favorite characters in this whole show are Marva and Luthen. Dude, we got. I wanted to Older hear characters. Luthen's thoughts after the events here on Ferrix, but yeah. he didn't talk to anybody or say anything. No, know? I oh. I almost kind of like that it was all left up to like, okay, what do you know about this character, his thoughts, his feelings, and now try to read his face. And I kind of like that you can't completely. It leaves you to be like, what an enigma of a character. Like I know that what she's saying, he's like, that's exactly what I want. But there's got to be. This element of like, hey, this thing I've been striving for, it's happening, and it's kind of scary. And I don't know if I'm ready. And then this kid shows up, and like, hey, I'm here. I'm ready to do it. Like yeah, that's that's, sure. that's the abs. That's the that's the final push that really like what Nemec was like, saying, right? Yeah, you have to try. Like the only thing that we got from Luthen through that whole speech was just a little bit of a jaw clench and a lip tremble. Yeah, that was it. But it betrays something from him. Yeah, I think. I think I, I I prefer I kind of prefer it this way where it's just like make of it what you will but we've given you information sure I don't want to just tell you I, I like you know there at the end too like you know I know like Andrew's not gonna die but the uh, 
the idea that you came here to kill me. It's like, you don't make it easy. Make <laughs> yeah. it easy. It's like, I didn't see you at all. Yeah. There was this huge war breaking out, yeah. you know? like Because, <laughs> I mean, what is Luthen if not just this guy that, you know, he's like a Nemodian, right? He's just assess- assessing risk all the time. He has a goal, yes, and it's a noble one, yes, but he doesn't get to do the noble work. <laughs> no. Sure. He does the risk assessment, and I think that hearing Marva's speech, seeing what happened on Ferex, and then having Cassian come and say, hey, you're, you can, you're free to kill me, but... Or take me in. I'm all in, you know? Yeah. No, I think Andor, like... It's the beginning of the hero's journey. A mixture of hearing some of the speech, but also what he heard from uh, Bra- Brazos? Brazo. Brasso. Brasso. Mm-hmm. Um, what heard from him <coughs> is just... Like, it helps to push him, like... What was what was the things like? Once those two things combined, kind yeah. of thing. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I feel like Marva and Clem both yeah. like have an understanding of like what's been happening mm-hmm. and the the comparison to like him thinking about Clem and the rust and how yeah. they just want to sell you the more expensive stuff and yep. her talk of like sleeping and the rust has been creeping in on us. Yeah. The darkness is coming and stuff. Like, I like the comparisons so. between the two things that they're talking about and they all kind of connect to. Cassian. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think that it's pretty incredible how understated a lot of those themes are uh, and not over the head like, you know, Star Wars is because it is a, you know, essentially a for fa- kids. It's a fantasy for kids yeah. and you need to be hit over the yeah. head. That's why Yoda is so yeah. very like... But I mean, Andor, for me, I mean, it's made for the kids who grew up and realized that it's just not all fantasy. You know, yeah. like that's what I think, you know, that's the target audience and I think that's what is resonating. Is it the most general or successful type of story you can make? No, it's not, but it's pretty damn good. <laughs> Honestly, I feel very similar to like Rogue One, where yeah. like Rogue One is not the same Star Wars stories that you usually would get. Yeah. And it was very different. And it and, was um, accepted weirdly, in my opinion. Like there was like people that loved it and people like that didn't like it, but I feel like as the years have gone on, more people than were saying they loved it say they love it now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it took people by surprise, yeah. and they didn't know if they wanted yeah. to like it because it was so different, because yeah. it killed their main characters, because sure. it told a story that was not hopeful and happy. Yeah, like it was depressing and sad, and everybody died. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But that's the realism of of fighting a superpower. And that's but the it's point before a new hope it's, is there. Yeah, it's yeah. about the sacrifice that these people made so mm-hmm. that these people can push forward to de- to defeat the evil. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like that's what it's about. I l- I love that in Nimic's manifesto, they specifically say, "No, you do need to try. We are not Jedi that live in the moment and let the Force flow through us." We are people that love and have pain and suffer and are oppressed, and we need to try to stop it. That's the, that's what the rebellion is. You can have Jedi come in and, and raise, the, raise it for you, but none of that works without this base-level rebellion that needs to happen. For sure. And at this point, like we don't have Jedi. We don't. You know? like, that's no. not a thing that exists yeah. anymore. All we can do is try. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really good, and it's really ballsy, I think, I, to go I, against one of the probably most quoted Yoda isms. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you know? I, I also like how he talks about like tyranny is an effort, mm-hmm. you know? It oppression, like just the the, the yeah. amount of effort it takes for them to do yeah. exactly what they're doing to keep yeah. everyone under their thumbs and stuff takes so much work. It's not easy for them to do this to us. Yeah. But let's not make it easy for them. Yeah. Make it even harder for them to do it. Because, like, they're trying to keep us in fear. But once you start rebelling and rising up, what are they going to do? And once everyone rises up, there's not enough of them, (laughs) you know? You saw how much effort it took for them to keep the people in the prison in line. Yeah. And that was, like, Mm -hmm. the bare minimum of security. And they they were spread so thin. And they had electric floors, you know? It took so much resources to keep those guys in there. And then here, too, like, none of those people had weapons. They, They had a bomb. Right, that kid had a bomb. Yeah, bomb. yeah, but besides that, like they didn't have guns or anything, and they a brick. were, yeah, one brick. <laughs> but they started Fucking pushing through and beat them. The Marvel would be so happy that she started a riot. Oh yeah, her oh, dead body started happy. a riot, <laughs> and her brick knocked yeah. the guy out. <laughs> I love they used her brick. Yeah. Oh fuck, that's so badass. Yeah, you know, people say like, how do you want to go out? Like, you want to? We can put your ass into a tree, or we can bury you here. All right, all right. See, and Marvel's like, hit me with. Like, hit me with an imperial face. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw my body 
into their masses. <laughs> the one guy headbutted a stormtrooper. Yeah, Rosso did. Yeah, Rosso. I like the uh, the kind of crew that we have on that ship. That weird Y wing engine ship. Yeah, that, that took off. Like they said, they were going to uh, the Ganji Moon or something like that. But if they do meet up, I think it's gonna be kind of a cool crew. Hmm. Like if Andor makes it there, you mean? Yeah. Um, if it's a season two thing, or I like he needs like a group. I guess he could. I kind of took like he had no plans on meeting up with him. He said he'll be back. He also told Luthen to kill him yeah. or take him in. Yeah. yeah. I, but Bix was like, he'll find us. You think I saw him? Like, nah. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I really? do. I honestly don't think Andor had a plan on going with him. Either Luthen or him. Going with him. I think that he'll find him again eventually. I, as I'm saying, I yeah. don't think he planned it. Luthen would either kill him or yeah. he's going with Luthen to work on this stuff. Sure. I don't think he's actually going to go and, like, I don't think his end goal was to, like, I'm going to go to here and then go meet up with him real quick. No, I'm saying that I think that they're going to be a resource that he's going to use in his rebellion later journey on in the next five years or within about four years. I don't four, know how yeah. long it's been. It's yeah. been five years since the beginning of the show. Well, we had at least well, how many how many years was he in prison? Was it like six months? Uh, at one point, they mentioned thirty days had passed, thirty rotations. Yeah, I think but it was. I, don't I think know it was exactly around like a month and a half. One month. Yeah. I don't know. What if Luthen would have killed him? Well, I mean, I'm not saying that, like... I mean, Or is he just, like, confident Luthen wouldn't kill him? I, I think th- he was pretty confident, yeah. Yeah, I think the whole reason why he went there, knowing or at least suspecting that yeah. Luthen wanted to kill him when he came here, was because he would give him a more valuable resource yeah. a than, lot. than yeah. peace of mind, mm-hmm. you know? Sure, yeah. But there's still that chance. Sure. You know, I don't know. But don't he's know the only well. reason why uh, that that mission got pulled off, you know? Yeah. Sure. The Aldani mission, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, he's doing what Luthen wanted him to do at first, which is like, hey, if you give me the chance, I can use you as this very valuable rebel intelligence resource. And then the next thing he learns is, he, oh, he just fucking took off. Luthen's like, well... He knows my name, we gotta kill him. <laughs> but now that he's back and saying, hey, I'm actually into this. Like, you know, the, the hero's journey always has the, the denial of the call to adventure and then the call of adventure. So we've had those two steps in this first season. I didn't think Mon Mothma was gonna have the daughter meet the, the son. I thought, like, I thought there was, like, the, the push of the gambling stuff with her husband, with, uh, was it Perrin? Mm-hmm. And, uh... Like, that was going to be starting to, like, kind of explain away and push doubt onto what he's doing rather than what she's doing, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. not sure what they were doing with that, necessarily. Because uh, then we, we're, yeah, still, I mean, a lot of it's, we're still meeting the sun there at the end. We are. Like, a lot of it's subtext, especially with the whole gambling angle, where, like, it's... If, I mean, these are all assumptions, but I'm thinking, like, okay, she's going to... What she's doing in, in covering tracks is that... She's going to think all that money is because he's doing gambling. Well, where is he getting it from? Well, well, there's this crook that we got introduced to, you know. Sure. And my daughter is now meeting slash potential betrothal to his son. And mom can just sit there and be like, I'm just this senator who was married to this criminal. You know, like it might be a thing where she's doing a couple stones at once maybe the betrothal is like a way of him getting out of debt somehow or something yeah Yeah. I I think she's just putting enough seeds in there where she doesn't look she she looks like a victim versus the person doing it yeah because as long as the the sequence of facts comes out the right way Mm -hmm. it's gonna look like he did a bad thing and then he's trying to cover up for it rather than her having been planning this for months you know yeah yeah, it's very it, much if, on the back. They, they find out about the gambling first, then everything from there is filtered through that yeah. that impression. It's not even that like she wants all that stuff to come out. It just might be a good safety net in case yeah. it comes out. And really, only the ISB is probably going to find out, yeah. right? And as we know with these intelligence things, they might not do anything about it. So socially... They might sit on it. Yeah, socially, or, it's not going to affect her at all. Or they just sit on a lot of it to have all the information, and then they'll be like, ah, he's doing this. That's what this explanation is. We don't have to worry about whatever it yeah. is. It's not like they necessarily take action, but what they are watching, they're at least getting answers in some way. Sure. Mm-hmm. And they don't believe Mon Mothma is aware of how they're getting answers. Yeah. Like, oh, she's 
she's not a, a figurehead for the newfound rebellion. She's just <laughs> trying to cover up some family yeah, sure. embarrassment. This is right? a scandal, but not an imperial scandal we need yeah. to worry about kind of thing. She's and not smart. She left the recorder on and the driver heard. Well, I, I like that she was like, keep your voice down. It's like, yeah. he can't hear us, know. you know? Like, the husband's yeah. the one pushing that he can't hear and stuff, so they keep talking. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's good. I, I hope for season two to have more Mon Mothma. Oh, definitely. Um, oh, man, do you think we'll... I really want more Mon Mothma. That's probably my only my only complaint for the first season is I just want more from her. Sure. Yeah. Like, she really just got to exist in, like, two or three sets and keep her head down, you know? It would be interesting. I don't know how or if they would do it, but having Tarkin for season two would mm -hmm. be very interesting. Hmm. I mean, we have a, they recast the whole actor and then started doing the, uh, the, you know, the Rogue One CGI uh, CGI face. But, I mean, we're getting closer to that type of stuff. I know they have Peter Cushing's estate permission, at least for Rogue One. Um, I'm open to it. I, I see problems and advantages for stuff like that. Sure. Or just recast them. For me, so. I think it depends on the era, I guess. Yeah. You know? Like, I don't know. The... I wasn't against having um, Winter what? Soldier. What was his name? Sebastian Shaw. Stan. 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 Sebastian like, Shaw played I, Anakin. I, and I stand him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but having him, like, being Luke Skywalker yeah. could have maybe worked. But I feel like that works really well when you have, like... Like, we have Tarkin in Episode 4. Mm-hmm. Like, if you go back in time, with the exception of, like, Clone Wars and stuff, we don't really have an actor who plays younger Peter yeah. Cushing. So, like, sure. back, back further, I we think We don't have easier. a face, right? Yeah, it's easier to put a face there and do yeah. that, I think. But, I don't know. It'd be interesting to have someone else just playing Tarkin, also in, like, the same time that, like, Peter Cushing yeah. would have been Tarkin. You know what I mean? Or it's, it could have been. It's, like, right? that tricky part where, like, well, Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, is, is here. Yeah. And then we have older Mark Hamill yeah. with Luke Skywalker... But like it's still Mark Hamill in both, so like to recast him for the in between part feels yeah. weird. So I don't I don't know what the best I, answer is. I, I you know? agree with that. For me, it's the utilization of the character. Is he going? Is the character going through something? Is he emoting? Is he reacting? If he's you know someone like Luke, Luke when we see him in Mandalorian Book of Boba Fett is like this. He's an, he's an ideal of that character. He's sure. not Luke that's going through some shit. No. He's Luke that is guiding someone else. So, no. like, Tar I, even Tarkin in Rogue One is, like, he's there for Krennic to react against. Yeah, He's I get there you. as an institution, not a character. I wouldn't want CGI Mark Hamill face during, like, uh, I don't know, what is it? The Last Jedi, when you're no. seeing him talk about Kylo yeah. and what he goes through and the, the fear no. in his face when he realizes what he's doing. It wouldn't work as well. I need an actor. An actor yeah. needs to utilize his tool, his face. Sure. Uh, so mm -hmm. at, at the point that that technology is now, it's, it's not about utilization. It's not quite there yet. It's a 10 for, like, stand there and say something. Sure. It's It's a... It's a six for show me something. <laughs> show me emotion, you know? Show me something new Dude, that yeah. I haven't seen. In Rogue One, the, the Targan stuff, I, I almost wish that they would have not... Like, it looks pretty good. I think it looks, yeah. I think it looks better than, like, the uh, the Leia one. May agree. Like, I don't think yeah. Leia looks quite as good. The, the problem with the Leia one is that, and the Targan one to an extent, is that those were filmed on film. When you film on film, you have to cake on makeup. You have to. Like, if you go back and watch stuff... Like, newer stuff that's still filmed on film, like, the makeup is completely different than it is for digital. Sure. So, when you're trying to recreate on digital someone that looked on like film. They, like on film, Leia is caked with makeup. So, what do we do? Do we make her not caked with makeup? Because that's what she looks like. But it's not going to look right on sure. digital, you know? Sure. Tarkin to a similar extent as well. But for Tarkin, what I kind of wish they would have done, they had one shot... I think they start with or they end with in like one of his scenes mm. where it's him looking out the window and you just see his reflection. Yeah. And I'm like, I wish they kind of would have just done that and he would have sure. only talked to Krennic through that. Sure. I understand. Because like it looks so So then you good have real. like you have the presence of the character. Yeah. And you have a facsimile 
of the face. It can yeah. be a little distorted because of the reflection. But it makes sense, you know? But it makes sense. Yeah. In so, like, scene, in my right? mind, yeah. when he turns, like, it looks pretty good, but not 100%. But in the reflection, it's hard to tell. And I can be like, well, I can understand why there's distortion. I yeah. agree with so, you. I think that would have been pretty cool. I agree with you from your and my point of view in that I know Peter Cushing isn't alive. Yeah. I'm oddly intimate with this face, you sure, know? Sure, sure. But if you talk to anybody else... And you say, like, hey, what would you think of the Tarkin CGI face? They're going to be like, what? Like, you can look at you know, people that have this response. They had no idea. They know the Leia one because people, a lot of people know Leia and they know Carrie sure, Fisher. But sure. Tarkin's not necessarily the most, you know. Recognizable My dad's not going to say, oh, it's Grandma Tarkin. Will, Willif, I think, is his first name. He's not going to say that, you know. But when he watches that movie, I guarantee he has no idea it's a CG character. Hmm. I wonder if I... The only real continuity thing with that is that the actor they got to play Tarkin is, like, two feet taller than... <laughs> than Peter Cushing. Than Peter Cushing. And he so, didn't wear slippers. And he didn't wear slippers. He didn't. So Tarkin is just so more imposing in that movie than uh, he is, in my, in my opinion. Yeah. Physically. So while I'm not sure if we get Tarkin, who we should get, though, is... Orson Callan Krennic? K2. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> Alan Tudyk. We should get him, I feel we like, should. next season, right? We will. Sorry. Especially if it, I was <laughs> waiting for Calvin because I feel like through the season there was like three or four yeah. times you're like, ah, K2, we're going to get yeah. K2, I mean, he's going to be in the prison. be great. From what we know when Andor was released is this is going to go up right to Rogue One, so the next season. Up, has up to the, uh, like the asteroid, like yeah. the first time we see him there. Yeah. Damn, what's that called? Um, the asteroid city, you know what I'm talking about, where they're both connected? Yeah. I would say any other day, but I, I haven't hit reached enlightenment. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> reached enlightenment. from me. <laughs> <laughs> the Ring of Kafreen. That's what Kafreen. it is. Kafreen. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, we're going to go up to Rogue One. Uh, so the next season is going to be covering like five years. If this one was, five years? let's say this one was one, let's grant it. The next one has to cover at least four. Damn. Unless there's a four year gap and then we go right to it. That's true, too. I think that we're Or like a sure. two year gap or yeah. something, right? I think that's going to be the big difference between this season and next season is this season is all about getting Cassie into this point. Sure. Where he's like, okay, I'm actually in. Honestly. The next season's going to be full Cassie. What it could be, is, I think it's between another 12 episodes, right? Yeah. If they do the arc kind of things, too, you could have like. Here in year Good. two is this story. Here yeah. in year three is this story. You know, yeah. and like you have three episodes, three episodes, three episodes in different years going yeah. through. So there's gaps in between each one. Yep. They might do that. They might. Why do you think she had death troopers? Because he was an escaped prisoner who had been working on Death Star shit? That's the closest I can think in terms of why those guys are there. Because... But like I said, they're special operations Typically, troopers. they would show up for, like, the secret... Because I think we also saw them with, like, uh, the the special TIE Defender program, too, right? Like, it's, like, top secret, like... Yeah. Programs that they have going on, not like strictly Death Star. Yeah, and I don't know why this would have been. We saw them with the Kyber crystal stuff that, with Saul Guerrero. Yeah, yeah, Rebels. they were there for sure in Rebels. Yeah. I feel like they were around the. Maybe they were around the Tide Defender. Were they around the Tide Defender? Did Man. that have some? They, I think they he were, did. I they feel were like the Tide they Defenders. Were. They were running out onto the runway and stuff when they were trying to break into yeah. it. Yeah, but generally it's like right? all the I, shit I, that I they keep remember. on. I think uh, it was like a mixture. It yeah, wasn't just. Maybe. Death Troopers. No, it's not just yeah. Death. Usually, like, you only have a couple. Yeah. When, yeah. when Scarif, whenever they were looking for the for the the Stardust plans, right? Like, there's all those other different projects. Mm -hmm. I'm sure all of those have yeah Death Troopers. Involved yeah, Dark and Saber yeah. and all that stuff. So, those are the things I feel like Death Troopers match with. So mm -hmm. I'm like, wonder why they're here. Yeah. Or is it just like if ISB is involved, they can summon in for like they they seem to be like guards for. Deidre or something like that's that. That's what they or, seem to be. Like yeah. personal yeah. guards. So maybe yeah. there's some kind of ISB maybe it would higher just up stuff. Expand what they're involved with. Sure. I suppose. Or you can did just they, get like a special thing. Did they ever it. talk? They never talked in this, did they? No. Because I was wanting to hear like Rebels didn't jarble, I don't think, yeah. but they typically are. Yeah, Rogue <laughs> One, you can't hear what they're saying yeah. to each other. They have that encryption thing. Mm -hmm. Which is really cool. I've always liked that yeah. detail. I, that fucking guy that flipped over B2. I was so mad. The prefect guy? And Brasso just fucking <laughs> went he, on he him. He chest kicked him. Threw that cape off. Cover that thing up. I was like, Put you monster. <laughs> I always, I just, I don't know what it is about B2, but like, it's because every time someone comes in that he cares about, he's always like, C -c -c and he's always so sad, like, notice me, notice me. <laughs> yeah. 
He he's just like a, wants to be with the people he loves. He's like a fifteen-year-old basset hound. Yeah, I know. That's like I'm, hobbling. Yeah. That? yeah, and you like you think about him at work. You're like, oh, he's by himself. I need to go home. Yeah, <laughs> I need to take care of. I hold my puppy. <laughs> yeah. I'm counting on you. You always say that. You always say that. You always come through. <laughs> <sighs> but we also had the mention of Canto Bite too. Yeah, we did. Well, gambling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're talking about gambling and stuff. So I like that they just mentioned that. They weren't like, I'll go to. I don't know. Probably somewhere else you can gamble. Sure, I and I mean it's a great one to use too because Canto Bite is in that that sector of the galaxy where the corporate sector where like it's not about who's imperial and who's not; it's who's rich and who's not. Sure. So, yeah. like, do you think that sticks from here all because that's later on? I, in yeah, the last Jedi, I, I, I do right? because they were the ones that were selling weapons to both sides. You know, sure. Yeah. Imperial but era stuff. That makes a lot of sense though. Like after Empire's kind of gone, where mm-hmm. it's like I'm taking whatever I can and selling to whoever. Yeah. Well. But, the first order era. I mean, right? it is, yeah. but the they order. were still doing it too. Sure, yeah, Th- through all of it. Mm-hmm. Is what, yeah, I, I get you. But yeah. it is definitely like a ritzier gambling location. It you is. know, it's not like going to I don't know Java's sale bar. I mean, it's yeah, there or something. You know, you go there because you're in the one percent of the galaxy. Sure, <laughs> that can. I mean, like you know, think about what Rose says about that place. Like, what's really built on? You know. It's not like, ah, well, it was cool, and then the Empire came. I think it's always been shitty. Yeah, but they got those cool, I don't know what, what the, where they were, those cool riding animals. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, father years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that they turned loose or whatever. Yeah. All right, we got some questions. Questions that need answering. Uh, Thurin says, how much of future Star Wars shows and movies should be like Andor? Should most of them be mature and whatnot, or should they stick to largely more all-age content like they've been doing with the occasional highbrow project every now and then? Uh, they should have a variety. I yeah, think I, I was going to say... And it's a mis- I feel like it's a mistake to think otherwise. I think Star Wars and Marvel both should. Sure, yeah. it's like mm-hmm. the people they catered to back in the 70s are so much older now, yeah. you know? So yeah. if you're just catering to, like, the kids of this generation... Mm-hmm. You're, you're leaving out all of them, and I feel Even, like that's why people don't enjoy... I don't like the prequels, I don't like the sequels. Like, yeah. well, these are meant more for the younger ages. Sure. And as you've gotten older, this isn't much different. It's not matured, it's it's still this kind of the same you know, story yeah. beats in a way. This feels so much more, I don't know, so, so different. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's good to have in this, in Marvel, in a lot of things, especially when you have that nostalgia factor, but you want to age with it. 100%. You know? Yeah. Like Clone Wars, great example of like mm-hmm. it started here, and then as it went on, it got a little darker with yeah. each season mm-hmm. of different themes and stuff it would touch on. I feel like not necessarily all, like I don't think Rebels and all Clone Wars and whatever should necessarily do that, no. but you know, like with Marvel, you should have Blade, but Blade probably shouldn't be a G-rated movie, you know? No, you, no absolutely you, like, not. You should kind of mix around like this is more for adults, this one's for family, you know, whatever. Yeah, Wolverine should be at least PG-13, yeah. right? I still want some death trooper thing so that we can have like a horror type of thing in Star Wars and that would be fun like I want I want to see different yeah. genres and stuff too like I like the yeah. spy thriller thing get some action give me a romance Star Wars you yeah. know give, uh, give me a Star Wars rom-com yeah. what would that be like I agree <laughs> I think it's important to note that my my want of having that variety is both selfish and selfless <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I want to see that but also it's yeah. just in, it's more inclusive but, for everybody to be able to enjoy yeah. the types of stories they want but also be like ah this is my Star Wars here's yeah. the western Agreed. Mandalorian right but here's the spy flick Andor yeah. and I, yeah. I'll tell you what I cannot stand and this is I, I will die on this hill I cannot stand people that like say like hey this is what I want and now everything that's not this is bad like Star Wars now that we've evolved past it just being George Lucas, needs to come from various creative people. Not one, not just Dave, not just John. It needs to come from different storytellers. That's where it's going to get interesting. Mm-hmm. That's where you're going to challenge shit. And that's where you're going to find new stuff to get excited by. Sure. And or is a new side. Uh, I don't it's- want people going out there and saying, like, well, you know, now that I've found what I like, no one else gets what they like. Sure. Sure. Like, I'm. I'm positive that all Star Wars is not going to be my favorite Star Wars. Yeah. But I'm going to watch it just because I want to see everything. Yeah. And then, like, you know, that might not be something I watch all the time. Yeah. I might still watch the prequels more often than I watch maybe any other Star Wars. Yeah. But that's just, like, I know this is my favorite versus these things. But I'm going to watch it all. Agreed. It doesn't mean I have to hate it or say that we shouldn't do that. Yeah. Not at all. Like, you know? how many Star Wars things <clears throat> did those people watch before they realized what their favorite Star Wars thing was? 
Sure. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Like if and they you never know stopped the watch first it. thing, yeah. and then you know through some greater wish power they said like no this is my favorite star wars thing stop making any future star wars things that could be better yeah or fit my interests more yeah and while i agree that different people can should be making like stories and stuff Mm -hmm. and it's not just from one mind um i do want like dave or you know like kevin feige like someone who just kind of like Keeps eyes on everything to make yeah, sure things just to make still, sure the dots still line up. Yeah, right? they have, I they want to try to have the story group. It's hard to do, uh, you know. We know from the EU and all that yeah. stuff of like so many storytellers had some really cool story ideas, but then they started conflicting with each other, and then we have twenty deaths for one Jedi. You sure, know? But, and you're never gonna get away from that. Like people need to change what they mean when they say the word canon. When I think of canon, canon is this like abstract. Here's what actually happened in the galaxy far, far away. And then all of these stories are telling stories about what actually happened. They're not all going to be right. They're not all going to have sure. the right details. You know, people they were very have... upset in uh, 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 Bad Batch where they changed from the comic book canon Order 66 to what the show did. And, you know, because, well, it was day rather than night. Okay, well, let's say it was night in the show, too. Well, when Order 66 happened... Kanan in the comic book turned left, but here he turned right. Like, we're always going to be having some inconsistency, and we're always going to have to say, well, which one is the right one? Well, none of them are the right one. Some of them are just closer to what the canon is. Sure. But the canon is not for you to, to, uh, to, to, to just look at. These adaptations of the canon are for you to enjoy. Yeah. Sure. The unreliable narrator yeah. kind of feel. It, it fits well with what we talked about with House of the Dragon, where it's like, yeah. here's a book that was written from like these mm-hmm. perspectives, but what the show's showing may not be 100% of what the book tells us, yeah. because these guys may not have been reliable. Mm-hmm. Sure. So it or kind of like an embellished war story, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like uh, Gindy, right, with Mace Windu. Did Mace Windu really just start punching battle droids mm-hmm. and doing all that shit? Did he or actually, was that little like, kid <laughs> just Superman like, punch a ship? Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. look at this Jedi. He's a man. He did all, and he's telling yeah. his friends his whole story and stuff. Like, yeah. he probably really had a battle, but that kid, he saw what he saw, yeah. but it's not what really happened. That's what I, that's yeah. what I would think of it, you know? Yeah. yeah it's a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't get the details right in fantasy because guess what? They're not real! <laughs> like, like, did Mace Windu really reach in, grab some wires, and yeah. control a droid ship? Yep, or did why he just, not? Or did he just use the force and yeah. fly the ship around after he disabled it? Sure. You know? but, but, it but to some onlooker, they're like, oh my god, he did well, this, but he's just to, to Gindy, he's like, that's what my mace does. When I think of the cannon, well, he does this. Sure. And it's not for everybody, but for the people that really like it, they love it. And then they, those people might not like something like Andor. Yeah. But for the people that didn't like that, well, they love this. Oh. Everybody has something. Did you see, um, I haven't watched it yet, but there's a short on Disney Plus that's from the Ghibli studio. For, I haven't seen of, it yet. Of Grogu. Grogu, yeah, it's the yeah, Grogu I, and the, uh, the Dust Bunnies, whatever I they saw are. the, yeah, I saw the, the thing for it, mm-hmm. and it started a pre-roll <coughs> thingy. I clicked out of the... Floor. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it yet either. I haven't watched sure. it. But I saw that was a thing, I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know they did that. But I don't know that, I haven't seen it yet, but like, mm-hmm. that might not be real sure but Might it could also canon, be within right? like oh this happens for Grogu it's so cool mm-hmm. sure alright more questions Shelton says do you think that Cassian will find his sister in season 2 otherwise what's the point of teasing him he had the clues that she's alive to go looking for her that's the reason that he's in this mess there's some time jumps coming because we're still 4 years away from Rogue One hmm, hmm. I mean we talked about that before didn't like Marva say she's gone or something like that. I mean, Marva like said planet, everybody was right? gone. Sure. And like he she was said just, like because he was just should, looking for someone the, from. Uh, damn, what planet was it? It was called uh, Canari. Canari, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Like he was just looking for someone from Canari. Yeah. So. No, I mean Marva took him, and and they they took him because they're gonna come and kill all these kids. Mm-hmm. You know there was uh, that place is like a mining. Disaster where like you're not even allowed to go there anymore. But whenever they left, they just left those kids there. So the kids were fine. But anytime someone would actually come to that planet, the Empire would come and just fuck everything up. Hmm. I'm gonna say I don't know. No, I almost feel like it maybe has a different meaning of like something he was looking for. But like, I mean, the it's, point it's not there. Yeah. It's like he's still hopeful, but she's gone, kind yeah. of thing or something. I mean, I, I think the point is to really establish that. Cassian is <laughs> he's the lowest of the low like he comes from 
Like, he is a kid from a planet we don't even go to anymore. That's how forgotten he is. That's how from the bottom he is. So that when he gets out into the real world, like, he has this perspective that others don't. Like, he doesn't really understand that, like, or I should say he understands more than normal people about these systems that have been put in place. And he's sure. like, it's not real. Let's fuck it. Like, they... I can just walk in. They, they, they don't even think that I could get in there. I can get in there. Sure. You know, like, I just think that it's... like you belong. I think it's showing how much of an outsider he really is and then how someone like Marva that brought him in can instill these things that will make him what we see in Rogue One. If we don't have the sister and she really is gone, I think it yeah. could also kind of show, like, that was the first thing we had of him here, right? In the, like, towards the very, like, first episode, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, potentially, you could have it be a thing of hope for him. Yeah. Where, like, he... He is or was someone who would cling to hope mm-hmm. in the hope that his sister was still alive. And then maybe he loses that along the way, but then he gets it back yeah. with Jen later on in Rogue One. You sure. know? Like maybe it could be that, because like she has her big thing of like rebellions are built on hope, you know? And I'll come with you. Casting said I had to. You know, like Casting's the one who's making them go and he gets all those guys to go yeah. and help and we're gonna do this. I yeah. have hope that we can do this, you know? So maybe it's something like that where it's like there is hope in him, but he kinda loses it along the way. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, J Trey thirteen says, as soon as the Empire laid a finger on B, the town immediately was fed up. <laughs> In all serious, no, uh, though, now that Cass is with Luthen, do you think next season will open up with their first proper mission together, or will we have a time skip when he's been shown the ropes? Uh, I, I like the idea, especially considering that we have a potential four and a half to five years of ground to cover that we're going to skip around. Kind of what I was saying. About, like, I hope we do like the, the three episode arc things. Yeah, skip six, through sure. That's years. exactly what Clone Wars did. Or even if you only do like, here's sure. two episodes, skip, yeah. skip a little bit, two episodes, skip a little bit. No, yeah. You know, you could have like six different timelines, right? Mm-hmm. Throughout mm-hmm. 12 episodes if you just two, 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 two. Yeah. That could be cool. Uh, Yoda the Hobbit says, a lot of people assume most of the characters on the show might die. But do you think it's possible that everyone on the ship which escaped Ferrix in this episode might still be alive after the events of Rogue One? Hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah, I would sure. like to I mean, think anybody so. Anybody can live through that we haven't seen die on screen. Yeah, I mean, I don't recognize any of them from anything. Mm-hmm. We had uh, M- Melshi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Scott. And then he took off, so we we'll probably yeah. see him again at yeah, some point. I'm sure. But yeah, I don't know. They might all live. I don't know what mm-hmm. we have of Bix or B two. You know, mm-hmm. sure. It seemed like she was recovering a little bit from. Yeah, from the it was Jesse, Brasso, Bix, B two, and I think that was everybody on that ship. Pack, Pack. Did you say? Oh yeah, Pac, and uh, Pac, uh, Pac? yeah, Wilman Pack. Pack. Yeah. Which is Salman's son. Yeah, he was there too. Yeah. So th- yeah, there was just that group there. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. I'm wishing now that K2 was called C2. Yeah? Yeah, like he, he never went back to B2 and he replaced him with C2. <laughs> Pegla. Pegla as well. <laughs> he didn't go. Pegla didn't go. He, no, he yeah. said he was staying behind. That's okay. why he was like, I'd feel better if you were coming along. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. I thought he was one of the guys that got shot on the square, but it was not him. No, no that was, was the not other guy. That was the guy who was... Who told him about the mom being dead. Yeah. Who was uh, on the, uh, the X, old box yeah. call. X1, the transport business yeah. guy. Yeah. Zawan. Zawan, 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 maybe. Zawan. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised. I thought Deidre was going to die. And then. I really did. And Cyril. I mean, Cyril came with Cyril. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Cyril definitely. That's all he ate was Cyril all the time. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, it was just a government cheese, man. That's all he was getting. Government cheese. You ever had government cheese? I don't remember government cheese. I never had government cheese. I don't I, think. When we I remember. remember his boss at Radio talked Shadow about it. talking about government he cheese. He said he had government cheese. Yeah. We ate beef and government cheese when I was young, 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 young. Was it beef or venison? Well, or was that I mean, before you? it was, that was before me. Okay. That was like when my brother was young. I remember that story That was too, before so. my dad had any cattle. Yeah, I remember yeah. you talking about that. Like, I don't like deer hunting because that's all we ate before. Yep. But no, I thought Deidre was going to die. Karn just came in there and saved her because he was he dressed like a normal dude. I yeah. felt like there was a moment where I'm like, a lesser show is going to have them kiss. Yeah, <laughs> like it for a moment, but I, she was just like, "I should thank you." I should thank you. This is still kind of creepy. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> like, how did you come here? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I mean, he came for Cassian though. In his sure, defense. Yeah, of course. And then it she had to know. He was just look like, "Good though." Deidre's here. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, uh, I love Mosk too. He's just so funny to me. It was funny though, cause like he was like Cassian. 
Cassian. Yeah. Deidre? Deidre? And it's like, who? Yeah. Ca- Cassie who? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he he didn't look for Cassian at all, you know. Yeah. No, he was just following her around. All right, those are the questions. Um, what a great season! No, I enjoyed it overall. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not what a ballsy season. It's not your typical Star Wars, it's but not, I kind of like that it's not. You know what I mean? Of course. I, mean, I appreciate that it's not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the showrunners like I'm not a Star Wars fan. They just brought me in to do some fixing on Rogue One, and then it was like. Hey, here's some stuff I thought about Cassian. So they started creating a whole Cassian show, and he heard about it. He's like, I think it sucks. I'll do it if you want me to do it. And they're like, all right. And that's what happened. I think it sucks. He didn't like what they were doing. He was like, no, that's not what you do. That's not what these people sound like. That's not what in, in his head. This isn't how the galaxy works. Who was that? Uh, Tony Gilroy, the creator oh, of the show. Okay. And he's like, I'll do it. I'm not a Star Wars guy, but I'll do it. And then he ended I'll up. I'll do it right. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I mean, he now is a Star Wars guy. That's the thing. Like, man, converted. <laughs> I, you know, I He's grad- enlightened. <laughs> it's like, dude, I, I graduated in 2005. The Star Wars prequels were my fucking life. Sure. And when I would go online, I would just see hate. And George Lucas sucks. And fuck Hayden Christensen. Fuck on that best. Fuck, you know, the little kid playing Anakin. This is all terrible. I'm the fucking movie master that gets to gatekeep what you like and what you don't. Like, that's what it felt like going on the internet back then. I know. And I was like, well, fuck, I'll just talk with my friends that like it. And guess what? 20 years later, it all changed. And then the sequels come out. And you have these fucking idiots online like, I'm the movie master. I'm the gatekeeper. You're not allowed to like this. And those motherfuckers like the, the prequels. You're doing what was done to you. Yeah, no, you're doing the you same know? thing. Fuck off. Shut up. Let people just come and experience Star Wars and enjoy. Tony Gilroy now is a Star Wars fan because of the shit he made. Sure. And there's going to be people that are I'm, fans of Andor. There are going to be people that are fans of the sequels, that are fans of Resistance, that are fans of Rebels. Let them have their Star Wars fandom. You can still not like shit. You just don't have to be this gatekeeper yeah. you know where are their stories I yeah. felt like a harsher yeah. word some, was gonna come out than gatekeeper <laughs> it's in my brain Calvin it's in my brain I can't I, I, I honestly, the energy I, come I, off I, you I can't fucking stand it some of the things I'm always curious on is when people are saying that it's like what the yeah. fuck have you made or done or yeah. created or written or anything yeah. you know where's know. your creativity it's like well I know movies and stories it's like you haven't made anything I know, <laughs> but well, I, I, the only thing I want to say, yeah, it like, is an just, olive branch. Like, there are people out there that have those opinions that love Star Wars. You just got to allow other people to love Star Wars in ways that are different from you. Sure. There's not you. There's not a better there's, way to love Star Wars. Trust so, me. I've tried. There's, <laughs> there's not. <laughs> there's also, like, a reverse gatekeeping, right? Where it's like, ah, oh, I hate you because you don't like Star Wars. Like, well, yeah. you can not like Star Wars. No, That's of course fine. not. But you don't need to... Hate yeah. on people who do like Star Wars, but I or, or I, whatever, right? I, I, I don't hate on people who yeah. like. I, I'm not a big uh, Twilight person. I know, but I'm not gonna hate on people who like yeah. those stories. You know no, what I mean? I'll make fun of the movies and I'll tease you a little bit, maybe. But I don't hate you because of not it. Not at all. No, yeah. But I, I'm not gonna say like, you're the problem with this. Yeah. World no, yeah. The industry <laughs> caters to you. No, you know, I've heard stories like that. But that's like, not those to say. people didn't decide to make the movie. <laughs> the <laughs> industry did. <laughs> like you know, we. You know, we're creators online, and we really like Star Wars and stuff. I'm not trying to gatekeep anything, but there are other people out there, other other creators and stuff, where, like, I just can't, I can't help it. I must, by the virtue in my heart, call you a hypocrite for what you're doing. This is what was done to you in the prequel era, yeah. and you're doing it in the sequel I era. I will gatekeep gatekeepers. I'm sorry. Like, there is no passing this. <laughs> you need to adjust your attitude. <laughs> but again... Hell, even in the original Everything trilogy time, everybody. people hated on Return of the Jedi because they had little teddy bears. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's always going to be people that outgrow Star Wars, and that's not to say that but Star Wars is for kids, if but you'll outgrow If we end up doing variety where mm-hmm. there's more ages and stuff yeah. like that, where it's like, this is more for adults, this is more for kids, like, yeah. then it, it, it evens out and it's like, well, maybe that's not for you, mm-hmm. but maybe this is for you. Sure. Yeah. You know, uh, on uh, our Star Wars podcast show, Badonka Gunk, which we actually would have been live today if you are following us on twitch.tv slash blindwave, uh, we're, we're covering a book called Dark Disciple, which is a Clone Wars era story. Mm-hmm. But there's a section of Katie Lucas who wrote the original stories. Dude, I cried. I cried too! <laughs> there's a part where she mentions that when she was uh, 15, I don't know, the prequels are being made. She would go with her dad to random theaters 
and just like they'd wait until like you know and then the the crawl's coming up and they'd walk in he said they they held hands and they just enjoyed watching Star Wars with Star Wars fans and they said that was the happiest George had ever been but like when you go back and you see what he was given in that era motherfucking Star Wars fans forced him to stop making Star Wars you know like this you I mean, you might not think this shit's very important, but it's really important, especially for the next generation that are gonna be making shit. And like, if you don't check yourself, you are ruining film culture, in my opinion. You know, like sure. that man loved to go and watch Star Wars fans enjoy Star Wars, and you don't really get to get that much anymore, except for us. <laughs> sure, sure. Come uh, watch us enjoy Star Wars. I give it to me. <laughs> Some people do. I know. All right. Is that everything for this one now? Uh, I think we still need a poll, too. Dang. The, the only thing I wanted to point out is I love that when Brasso and Andor saw each other again this episode, they had a genuine, hug, intimate, manly hug. Andor latched his hands behind yeah. Brasso's back. Yes. Like, he it was, it was a, like a, it was like a little could, kid. It's like he could barely reach. Yeah. He yeah. was like a little kid hugging their dad. Those two right. actors showed love to each other in that scene. I think that it's rare for, like... To feel the emotion, like... Well, you, especially really for men. Like, sure. men, like, we're, you know, we don't cry and we're hard and you know, sure. we get shit done, you know? You don't get that from Han and Luke. You don't no, really you get know? that the from The most Han you get would be, like... They shake each other. Like, yeah, you did it, you know? Like, but that was, like, a true loving hug. Yeah, because after, the, like, after the trench run yeah. and blowing up the Death Star and yeah. stuff, they, like, run oh, together. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're yeah. like, shaking beers. <laughs> <They're like, laughs> <talking laughs> you know? Their arms kind of hook shit. Yeah, they're popping champagne, you know? But that was, like, a man and other men who've been best friends their entire lives, and he's like, hey, man, I'm sorry you lost your mom. Yeah. Gave him that hug. I oh. thought that was really cool. And the hotel cook. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was good like, too. Cassian? And then Cassian's going away, and he's like, I'm sorry about your mom. Yeah. Like, this, this you feel like this, this small town community. It, it does. Like, where everybody knows each other, and where the matriarch has passed <laughs> away. And everyone is sad. Everyone's brought down a little bit because of that. Like yeah. the, the community is lesser. And the hammer guy, will, this is Sparta, you off the damn tower. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's great. <laughs> he had no lines. <laughs> he didn't. But he had a name, though. Fuck yeah, he did. I don't know it. All right. Guys, the poll for the last episode of Andor. We want to know what was your favorite arc? Uh, through the Andor series. We'll have them listed in the poll so you can see uh, like episodes one through three. I think it's like four through five. Then there's like a standalone episode. So like there'll be all those listed and uh, let us know what your favorite part was. Um, I really enjoyed the prison part. The prison art. I thought it was maybe one of my favorites. I mean I love the ending here. Yeah. But seeing that and seeing the inside of the prison like that. Like I've you know I've read with uh, Rebel Rising kind of getting some ideas of Jen Erso and what she went through yeah. and seeing that in Rogue One. But seeing this prison was I love seeing that, the prison yeah. break and all that. And uh, we had a uh, oh, Gollum, Smeagol, uh, Claw, you know, <laughs> Caesar. <laughs> Andy ah, Circus. Andy Circus. Pick <laughs> <laughs> <Take> one. <laughs> what a career that man's had. I know. Did you say Snook? No, no I didn't he even didn't. Say no, Snook. He didn't even say Snook. You didn't say the Star Wars thing. <laughs> oh, man. Gosh. That's great. Uh, it, Al Donnie is such a close second, but. I think I agree with the prison. Dang it, if you're going to agree with him, I got to as well. It's so good. I thought you were going to pick a different one. It's like, okay, we each get one. Aldani and... is great. I, I mean, you know, <sighs> the, the, the big criticism of like, oh, man, we didn't get to spend any time with those characters in Rogue One. Like, I didn't even care. You know, like, Aldani is like that times ten, you know, in that you care about those characters so much. And they just like, yeah. like, Gorm just like dies. Like, ah! And he, if, you, if you blink, you miss that he died. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's so good. Sure. So that's a close second, but yeah, it's the prison. All right. Well, guys, oh, comedy joke today. No, it's it's definitely the prison. Okay. Aldani, our close second, and fucking Luthen's speech. Oh, you just that's just that arc. just the speech. That's that, a whole that was arc. a whole arc. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching and or with us. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any Star Wars stuff. We cover like all the Star Wars, including our Star Wars podcast, Badonka Gong, that we have once a month over at twitch.tv slash blindwave. Make sure you uh, follow over there so you get notifications when that happens yep. as well. Uh, we'll be having another one in December, I think the 22nd. I forget. It'll be announced over on Twitter as well. So mm-hmm. subscribe, vote in the poll. We'll see you guys next time.